And welcome to this edition of Fresh Hope for Mental Health. Our mission here at Fresh Hope for Mental Health is to empower you to live well in spite of your mental health challenge by sharing insights through interviews, practical tools for living well, encouragement, and courage for overcoming all from a Christian perspective. And now, here's your host, Pastor Brad Hafes. Hello, my friends, and welcome to this edition of Fresh Hope for Mental Health. I'm Brad Hafes, your host. Our purpose here on Fresh Hope for Mental Health is to empower you to live a faith-filled, rich, and full life in spite of having a mental health diagnosis. And today, I have a friend of mine that I've just generally met at a meeting out in Washington, D.C. We had the privilege of being part of a meeting where they brought faith leaders that work in the area of mental health together, and uh, she and I have connected um, through Facebook mainly, I think, and um, I saw that she had written a book. And I wanted to talk to her about it. And so I welcome my friend Sarah Lund, who is actually Pastor Sarah Lund, and she is a denominational leader for the UCC, United Church of Christ. And I'm so glad that you're with us today, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Brad, so much. And I want to say thank you for all that you do to help bring hope to all of us who experience mental health challenges. Well, it's great to talk to you today. Yeah, great to have you. And now, you know, we sort of know each other, but tell me, tell me about yourself. Tell, tell me a little bit about what brought you to write a book. And well, thank you. Let's get yeah. the name of that book right out right yes. away. Great. So Blessed Union yeah. Breaking the Silence about Mental Illness and Marriage. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes. yes, mental illness and marriage. So I've not read a lot of books about years. that. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a conversation we felt comfortable having yet in public. And sure. that is really my calling, um, to help break the silence. As you know, and as our listeners know, there's still too much stigma and shame when it comes to mental health conditions. Yes. And so I feel called to be a storyteller. And in the storytelling about what it's like to live with a mental health condition, we can create communities of care and hope. Right. And I found that after uh, my marriage, um, I've been married 15 years, and it wasn't until after I was married that I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh And I'm in treatment and recovery for that, and it's going really well. Um, But before my diagnosis... um, my husband also is in recovery and treatment for depression, anxiety, and addiction. And we're doing well in our recovery programs and have great support from therapists and doctors. Yet our marriage was really struggling before we realized the impact of mental health conditions. And I think that is just a reality for a lot of us. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because, as you know, mental health conditions impact our mood our behaviors, our ability to communicate. And so, of course, the people we love the most and are married to um, feel it and see see it. Absolutely. In a very deep, profound way. Yeah. I know when, before I had my major episode and then was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, it really put a toll. I, I mean, our marriage was really at risk at that point because I was just not making a lot of sense to my wife at all. I was not the man she married. Yes, and as you know, um, people who are married and who have a diagnosis are at a high risk for divorce. Yes. And I think the word of hope is it doesn't have to be that way. Absolutely. If we can um, help folks get the resources and support and a coach, you know, and a doctor and a pastor and a therapist, um, we can save lives, we can save marriages, and you can find uh, a new kind of love. And so really, this is the work of debunking the myths and stereotypes that all you need is love to make you happy. And I think sometimes we set up couples for failure 
um, because we, we teach and we kind of promote that love will save you. You know, you find your bride, you find your groom, and you'll live happy, happily ever after. Oh, yeah, yeah. And in our vows, you know, do you, you promise to love someone in sickness and in health. And I'd always thought that meant, you know, heart attack or cancer. I never thought the sickness <laughs> might be a mental with, sickness. Yeah, with right? the brain or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the brain. Mm. The brain might get sick and how that... Um, you know, really impacts every level of intimacy from, you know, our desire to be physically intimate to being emotionally intimate. And so I think it's really helpful to just be honest and open and talking to our partners about it and then getting getting support from the faith communities. Absolutely. The Tell me about the book itself then. Tell me what, if I'm and and unfortunately, I don't have a copy in front of me. But if I picked up a copy of that and um, looked at it, what would I find in there? And who well, should yeah. get a hold of that book? <laughs> yeah, Blessed Union is for all of us, because I think every one of us knows someone who lives with a mental health condition, whether it's mild, you know, medium or a serious mental health condition. My book's designed to be a primer, so it really introduces people to the, the head and the heart, the science and the faith about mental health. Uh -huh. And so I, I use scripture. I'm grounded in the scripture of 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not boastful or arrogant mm -hmm. or rude. And talk about how marriages who experience the challenges of mental illness can be faithful to this call in scripture to love. Yes. And I look at the marriage vows. And so each chapter takes a part of the marriage vows um, to comfort, you know, to love in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live. And mm. with that first Corinthians, and I give not only my story, but I have interviewed other couples. And so there's about six other couples and we get a glance into their marriage mm. and how they're impacted by mental illness. And how it strains or challenges their faith and their marriage vows. Mm -hmm. And then I have reflection questions, and then I close with a prayer. So this is the perfect book for a small group, um, a Bible study. It's to get that conversation started uh, so that we all can feel comfortable being open and honest about our own lives. Great. Oh, yeah. And it sounds like kind of book that um, one could, if you were going to do a sermon series on a family or whatever, draw from uh, to use within a sermon series, huh? Great for a sermon series, great for premarital counseling. I don't know about you, but when I did my premarital counseling, um, mental health was not brought up, <laughs> nor our personal histories or family histories. Yeah. And I've been trained as a premarital counselor and given materials, and it doesn't include mental health either. And right. so I, in my book, I do a little bit of, of pushing the edges and saying, you know, our bias in marriage counseling is that people don't have a mental illness. If you look out there at the marriage therapy and marriage counseling books, they assume that people don't have a mental illness. Exactly. So, so some, some writers will say, oh, in your marriage, just be sure you wash the dishes you know, mm -hmm. uh, put the toilet seat lid down, um, <sighs> go on date nights, and that will really save your marriage. Yep, yeah. Um, and I'll just share, you know, in our marriage, um, serious depression is, is part of what we live with. And when there's a real bad episode, it's hard to get out of bed for my Absolutely. husband. Absolutely. So there will be dirty dishes. You know, there will be things not getting done. Um, but it's not because he doesn't love me. It's not because he doesn't want to be a good husband. It's his medical condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that is a different conversation than someone who's being selfish or rude right. or unkind or, or just in a bad me. mood. Right, or in yeah. a bad mood. Right, right. Well, and really no different than if he was undergoing chemotherapy and was not feeling well. You'd understand that more easily because it's exactly. something you can see or understand. But yeah. Yeah, And I think, too, with mood disorders, um, there's no telling from day to day, right, how things will be. Exactly. And that's another, that's another element that we live with. 
and I talk in my book, there was one marriage, we're in marriage uh, counseling, it really helps us. Um, he just shared in a, in a quiet moment that he had had thoughts of suicide. And I was shocked and mm-hmm. heartbroken, but so glad he could tell us. Yes. Because it turned out it was a it was a negative side effect of a medication. Oh. And um, there was something we could do. You know, we called the yes. psychiatrist. He got off that med. He got into a different uh, treatment plan. Uh, we went to a NAMI support group, and that helped. Mm. Um, but it was a scary moment for us. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. And there aren't a lot of places where we could go to look for help or support. Mm-hmm. Because of the stigma and the shame, it just felt so scary. Yeah, and when when you're in ministry, sometimes it even be, there's even more stigma. Uh, or it, when you're in a helping profession, our mayor's husband in Omaha here died by suicide recently, and um, she's a very strong woman, and he was very. Uh, and that has nothing to do with it in the sense of she is able to keep going forward now after all of this is what I meant. But he was very active in the medical uh, profession. He was a doctor and he just felt like he could not go to get help. And um, yeah, so it can be scary and difficult and even more stigmatizing when we're in the helping professions. Yes, yes. And isn't that the, the tragic reality that um, it isolates us and puts that shame? And so I think the more we talk about this, and I'm so glad to be on your show and in, in this conversation to say, you know, thoughts of self-harm are more common than we realize oh, among the, all yes. ages yep. and all people. Yep. And what are the warning signs and what are the ways we can help? Yes. Help people. And sometimes it is, in fact, the medicine that causes it. I, right. I, I was trying a new medicine um, some years ago, and um, I was maybe three days into it. And I, I actually was able to tell the person who developed the medicine the story. And I just started getting ticker tape thoughts across my uh, the mind's eye about this would be a good day to die, or this mm-hmm. would be this, or the you know, and I had not ever had that before. And of course, it was the medicine. The minute I stopped it, it went away within you know twenty four hours or whatever. But sometimes we think we don't think about the medicine and put that two and two together. So if you're listening today and there's thoughts of suicide. You, you need to be honest about it and you need to talk about it and and to let those around you that love you know about it, but also your doctor, because you're, there may be a medicine component to it. And yes. that's so wonderful to have that ability to figure those things out, you know. Yes. Yes. And the, the suicide hotline is one 800 Two seven three eight two five five. If um, that is a resource that's helpful to you, it's good just to have that in your phone. Yes, so you can share with people at any time. Yes, and there's some new. Um, I'm not going to remember what it is. I shouldn't go there because there's a a new app that I'm hearing about on the radio um, about that is provided for people at being able to, when you don't feel like you're doing well, to reach out to your friends. Uh, maybe somebody can Google that at some point, and I'll let you guys know about it that are listening today. Um, I think that's the key, is to, to, to talk about it, to let someone know that you're not a bad person. You know, there's yeah. not, it's not your fault. You know, in terms of faith, it's not that we don't have enough faith or that God doesn't love us or we don't love God. Um, and so that's why I, I really appreciate the insights from clinicians and brain, you know, all that we know about the brain mm-hmm. and how we can bridge that gap between our faith yep. and science and really come together to help people live whole lives Absolutely. filled with love and hope. Absolutely. Now, I have it from Doug Beach that this is an exceptional book to read. 
And, oh, thank you. Yeah, so I want to encourage those of you who are listening, because I sense that this is also a good book for any friend where there's a deep friendship where you care about and love your friend, that you could read this and benefit greatly from it also. You don't have to just yes. necessarily be married to read this book, right? Right. It's a, it'll help you be a better friend, a better neighbor, a better coworker, um, a better colleague, a better parent. Um, I've had folks reach out to me saying how much this would help them understand the dynamics that they notice or observe in other mm -hmm. couples. Mm -hmm. I've had folks who are divorced and said, I wish we had this during my marriage. This would have really helped us understand oh. what was going on. Yeah. And I have folks reaching out to me who are in a marriage where mental illness is an impact and they feel less alone. Mm -hmm. They feel seen and heard. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it makes my heart just so happy because we, there are a lot of us, you know, if, if one out of every four of us mm -hmm. and with the pandemic, you know, I've seen data about half of us now have oh, some sure. kind of anxiety and depression we're coping with. Mm -hmm. Then think of all the, the couples and all the marriages that are feeling the stress and strain right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. And, you know, I don't, many times this isn't included in conversations about mental health, but I think there's this whole aspect of, I always tell people, not everybody has a mental illness, technical, technically speaking. Um, but I can tell you, everybody's got emotional issues. And, mm, I like that. Um, and I always tell people, if you think you don't have any issues, let me live with you for 24 to 36 hours, and I will trigger you. I'm certain of it. <laughs> <laughs> I have the spiritual gift of triggering people. There you people. go. I love it. <laughs> and, and, you know, the reality is that everybody's messed up. Everybody's right. broken. And whether it's technically a mental illness or it's emotional issues that show up, you know, uh, it's there. And, you know, so whether you, there's mental illness within your marriage, I would say get the book, read it, you know, yes. and benefit from it, you know. Blessed Union. Yes. Blessed Union. You can get it anywhere books are sold, um, Amazon. And the Chalice Press is a publisher. What I have in the book, too, are tips. So each chapter has a tip. And Great. then I'm so happy we included a journal. So there's a guided journal at the end. Mm. There's about 12 pages with kind of key questions to think about and ask yourself. And oh, right. Some room there to share your reactions. Mm. And then there's resource pages of further ways to, to get some support. Mm. And so I'm, I'm very excited about you know, moving into the conversation Absolutely. because um, we have a choice about who we are married to, mm. you know, and so that's to me what's different than mm -hmm. being in a relationship, you know, with a sibling or a parent, yeah. uh, a family of birth. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. choose to love and to stay committed. Mm -hmm. And so how can we support couples who are really committed to their marriage mm -hmm. and are looking mm -hmm. for health? and for a deeper sense of love. And so I encourage us to look at God's love. Absolutely. And that, as you know, you know, there are some times where human love fails us. Absolutely. Where our, our need to be loved unconditionally is so great that mm -hmm. sometimes our partners are not able to give us that love. Mm -hmm. And it's not about being unfaithful or unkind or uncaring. Um, sometimes the, the conditions prevent them from showing love or communicating love. Right. And that might be temporary or it might be a spell of time. Right. It and could so be, where do you go? Yeah. yeah. And it could be just from unprocessed pain in their own lives or yeah. um, something they went through or sometimes it's just how you're raised. You know, yeah. you come from a family that doesn't show it that much or whatever. Um yeah, my wife and I have always had the, um, <laughs> we adopted a child, um, our oldest is adopted, and when we uh, were going through the adoption process, the social worker asked us if we'd ever thought about divorce, <laughs> and we looked at each other and said, no, <laughs> no, never. Wow. Murder, yes. <laughs> you know, just to have that, we're in this, period. Yes. You know, yeah. and it because that it's environments like that that make it safe to say I'm not okay. 
That's right. That's right. And so I like the, there's a model where you are your own advocate and healer, and in marriage, you become your partner's advocate and healer. Amen to that. Amen and that, to that. Isn't that powerful? Yes, 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 yes. And how you care for each other. You know, my wife and I have been married 43 years, I think, um, 43 or 44. Um, and, you know, when I was sick with bipolar disorder, she cared for me. And she became my advocate. She became what I could not be at that point, even for myself. And then when she had breast cancer, I became her advocate. Mm. And, you know, how you just shift and you are tender for each other and care for each other. And, you know, at moments like that where no one dare cross the one who's hurting because the one who's the advocate is going to take care of them. You know, yes. don't cross them. You talk to me about this, <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, it marriage is so wonderful, but it's work, isn't it? It is work and it, it can go deep. You know, it can be such a, a source of deep um, being known and, yes. and being honored for who we are, you know, in and, and, and every way. <laughs> yep. You know, um, if, if, if there's that trust. And that sense of of being held in love um, yep. for who you are, who you who who you are of, of your whole self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the way you're expressing it because um, it it's not a um, storybook kind of thing. It's real. It's real. Real talk about real marriage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Blessed Union. Blessed Union, and you can get it wherever books are sold. And I bet yes. you can get a good price for it on Amazon. So, Blessed Reunion. And um, is there a website where people could read a little bit more about you or find out about you? Or uh, Yes. I, and, yes, I have a website, sarahgriffithlund.com. Okay. I have blogs there. There's interviews I've done with media outlets and podcasts. Wonderful. And yes, and there's um, just great resources there that will help you and your community. And I'm with you. Um, there's hope. Oh, absolutely. You know, this is a very hopeful conversation. Absolutely. And for our listeners to, to know you're not alone, that you are loved more than you know. Absolutely. And, um, we're, we're part of communities that are here for each other, and we want to offer you that same support. Absolutely. And, um, you know, if you wouldn't mind, um, let's just, Sarah is spelled with an H, and you said Griffith? Yes. Do you want to spell it? G-R-I-F-F-I-T-H, Lund, L-U-N-D, dot com. All right. That's great. Sarah Griffith Lund, dot com. Check it out. I think she's got a lot of wonderful resources for all of us. And um, Sarah, would you mind just speaking now to the person listening who might be struggling with their uh, somebody they love that has a mental health challenge or that they have the mental health challenge? Could just go ahead and share with them just briefly. And then if you would um, pray for them. Thank you. Well, what I will love to share is from my book, um, as I work through this book, writing it, uh, it came to me that we really need a new vow for marriage that honors our whole selves and how oftentimes mental health challenges are part of who we are. Mm -hmm. And so I want to share this with our listeners as something for you to, to consider as a renewal vow or as you perhaps are planning your own marriage. And, and here it is. A new vow for marriage. This is my promise to you. I will see you as a whole person and not as your worst symptom. Mm -hmm. I will love you for who I know you to be and not for how you feel or behave. Mm -hmm. This is my promise to me. I will see myself as a whole person and not as my worst symptom. I will love myself for who I am known to be and not for how I feel or behave. Mm. This is my promise to us. 
We will seek support from family, friends, and the wider circles of care so that we can faithfully fulfill these promises. We will bless our marriage each and every day, knowing God is love and trusting God is with us. Hmm. That's powerful. That's incredible. Hmm. Let us pray. God, we are so thankful for conversations like this, where we are reminded of your great love for us, no matter mm. who we are, no matter what our mental health status or condition, no matter how we feel, we are loved mm. as a whole person made in your image, God. And so I pray a special blessing upon the person listening who is feeling despair feeling mm -hmm. rejected alone feeling hopeless god mm -hmm. we ask that your ray of light of hope shine right now upon this person and fill them from head to toe mm -hmm. with your radiant love mm -hmm. and may this love pour out and connect them to someone today mm -hmm. today god and maybe there's a listener who is feeling the call to connect to someone, someone they haven't spoken to in a while. And God, please make those phone calls happen, those texts happen. May there be a waterfall of connections that come from this conversation so that we can truly come together as your beloved people sharing hope one conversation at a time. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being with me today, Sarah, and uh, sharing. If, if, if our listeners would like to email you, is it okay if they would email you? And yes, what, at I what love address? to hear from people. Thank you. It's my um, Sarah Griffith Lund, so just like the website, mm -hmm. and it's at gmail.com. Great. Sarah Griffith Lund at gmail.com. That's yes. great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for so being much. with us. Yes. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Pastor Brad. You bet. Well, my friends. Thank you so much for listening to this edition of Fresh Hope for Mental Health. We pray and well, I suspect I know it's been helpful to you. And we'd really love to hear from you. You can email us your comments, questions, or insights um, to Pastor Brad at freshhope.us. Uh, you can always leave a voicemail, too, on our number, which you can find at freshhope.us. If you'd like to connect with us through social media, we're on all the typical social media places. And we do have a YouTube channel where you can watch some of our videos. And if you would do a favor for me, leave a comment about this podcast on, especially if you're listening on iTunes and uh, let us know and tell a friend about it. Um, I want you to know that I really believe you should get this book that Sarah has been talking about. I'm looking forward to reading it myself. And uh, that uh, uh, the thing that she read to us from the book is so profound, my friends. And uh, so, well, anyway, until the next time, may the Lord fill you with his hope, fresh and new daily. I'm Brad Hafes, and this has been another edition of Fresh Hope for Mental Health. You've been listening to Fresh Hope for Mental Health. If you have an opportunity, please review, share, and subscribe to the Fresh Hope for Mental Health podcast on iTunes or on the service that you use. We encourage you to share our podcast on social media with your friends and family. Previous podcasts of Fresh Hope for Mental Health can be found at freshhopeformentalhealth.com, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, and iTunes. Fresh Hope is one of the leading networks of faith-based peer support groups internationally. For more information about Fresh Hope, go to freshhope.us.